Hi, I'm Mike McRoberts, author of Beginning Arduino, and welcome to the Arduino Academy. Welcome to the Arduino Academy and to lesson one. Uh, this is the introduction to the Arduino. In today's lesson uh, you will do three things. We will learn three things. Uh, firstly we will learn uh, what is an Arduino. Secondly what can you use an Arduino for. And then thirdly I will show you how to set up your new Arduino and get it running ready for lesson two and onwards when we will actually start creating things with the Arduino. So the lesson style throughout this video series will be that I will, uh, or we, we will make something with the Arduino. Uh, we will get it working, we will see it working and we'll go, great, that's fantastic. After that, we will then learn how it works. So you'll make it, you'll see it working, you go, great, that's cool, and then afterwards you'll learn how it works so we will then go into the hardware and the components and how all of they work and I will then show you the code uh, that has been uploaded to your Arduino and we will run through the code and I will show you how that code works. As we go along through each of the lessons each lesson will be designed to introduce you to another uh, electronic concept or another computer programming concept so as we work through the lessons you will get more and more competent and hopefully by the end of, of these video lessons you will be a competent Arduino developer. Um, so a little bit about me, my name is Mike McRoberts, I'm the author of uh, Beginning Arduino, a very popular Arduino book which is now in its second edition and I got into Arduino about six or seven years ago now. Um, at the time, um, well, I still am. I'm an I'm a amateur astronomer and astro uh, astrophotographer. And at the time, I was thinking about um, possible ways of making a cloud sensor. How can I detect if the sky is clear or if is it cloudy while I'm not there? So if I've set up my astrophotography kit outside and I'm taking some long exposure shots um, you know sometimes your, your equipment is running for hours and hours and hours you don't want to stay by your, your equipment while it's running so uh, with this being England quite often it clouds over within you know minutes sometimes of it being clear so um, rather than sitting outside and having to watch the sky all the time I wanted some sort of automated system that will tell me uh, when I'm not there, it will alert me to the fact that it's getting clear or it's getting cloudy or, or whatever in between. So I started researching um, methods of doing that, methods of um, uh, detecting is the sky clear, is the sky cloudy, is it moving from clear to cloudy, is it moving from cloudy to clear. And I came across this technique on a, um, on a weather website, I can't remember what it is now, but it was, it was a technique about using two temperature sensors. Uh, and by using these two temperature sensors in a particular way you can actually detect if the sky is clear or cloudy. Uh, and I thought that was amazing and I thought it was very very simple and you know I was thinking to myself why would I go out and spend £150 on a cloud sensor, uh, you know you can buy cloud sensors but they're very very expensive when it seems that you only need a couple of cheap components so then I thought to myself well okay so how can I connect up a couple of temperature sensors and get readings from those temperature sensors so I can detect this uh, concept. Does it work or not? So when I started looking online about um, methods of connecting temperature sensors up to a PC, uh, I came across all kinds of different ways of doing it. There was all kinds of hardware out at the time. But one of the things that um, kept cropping up was the Arduino. And um, I also could see online that people were making all kinds of cool things with the Arduino, uh, and it was you know it was quite cheap. It was um, twenty pound something like that at the time, um, and the temperature sensors were a couple of pound each. So I thought, why not? Let's go for it. 
So I went and bought an Arduino, I went and bought a couple of temperature sensors and the USB cable and within literally just a few days of me buying all of this stuff I had a fully working cloud sensor. Now i would never ever used an embedded microcontroller before. i would never programmed in C before. I have programmed before. I've programmed in basic and visual basic and languages like that. Um, but I've never programmed in C before. Uh, or I didn't before before I bought all of this kit. Um, never really messed around with electronics properly apart from uh, Radio Shack kits. Um, I don't know if you remember them, you used to buy these 50 in 1 or 101 uh, kits. Um, so my mind was blown that I could go out and buy this stuff and literally within days I taught myself everything I needed to know about computer programming uh, for the Arduino and all about the um, concepts regarding hooking up resistors and temperature sensors and everything else that I needed for the project and had a fully working cloud sensor. And that's the beauty of, of the Arduino and that's, um, that's what they're all about really, is taking an, an idea and taking that idea through to fruition and building something cool and doing it easily. Uh, and you don't have to be an electronics engineer, you don't have to be a, a computer developer, uh, you just need to be keen, you just need to have a great idea and then you can go out and make it. And that's what we're going to do through this video series, we're going to learn how to use these great devices so that you can make something cool yourself. What is an Arduino? Well, an Arduino is a open source programmable circuit board that enables people of all skill levels to create interactive things and, and cool projects. Um, an Arduino can interact with whatever you connect to the Arduino. So you can connect buttons and LEDs, uh, motors, LCD displays, um, dot matrix displays, ultrasonic sensors, speakers, GPS units, uh, SD cards, uh, you can connect it up to the internet, um, you can make it talk to your mobile phone, you, you can connect anything you like to an Arduino. And Arduino and the Arduino project consists of two things, you, you've got the physical board itself, which is what you use to connect your devices to, your sensors to and things like that. And then on your PC you have the software side of the Arduino. Uh, you have a piece of software called an IDE, uh, Integrated Development Environment, which you will download and install, we'll do that later. And you'll use that IDE to write the software in, in C, uh, or C++, it depends who you speak to, um, which is the language that the Arduino uses. And you'll write your code in the IDE and then you'll upload the code to the board itself and then the Arduino uses that code to talk and interact with the devices that you've connected to the Arduino. Um, one of the reasons that the Arduino is so popular is because of the huge uh, community that comes behind the Arduino. Um, there's hundreds, probably thousands of websites out there which um, are all based around the Arduino and making things for the Arduino, the Arduino.cc uh, website, which is where you get your software from, uh, is the main website for the Arduino. And they've got a great forum on there where you can go and uh, talk to other people and you can ask for advice and stuff like that. And that's, that's what makes the Arduino so great. There's loads and loads of books you can buy for the Arduino. Obviously, my one is the best. Uh, but you know, there's other books you can buy. Uh, I've, I've got a couple in my uh, in my collection. But there's there's loads of books out there. Obviously, buy the best one. Um, but yeah, there's a great community behind the Arduino, and uh, that's what makes it so popular. So that's what an Arduino is. What is on an Arduino board? Well, let, let's take a look at one, and uh, I'll show you what is on the board. So the board itself uh, consists of the main chip which runs along uh, the, the middle, uh, the bottom, just below the middle. 
this is an 80 mega 328p chip. Uh, that's the brains of the Arduino. This is where you will uh, upload your code to. And um, this chip will then run your code and it will talk to the sensors and the other components that you've connected to your Arduino board. Uh, the chip has got output pins and input pins and these are broken out onto the board along these uh, what are known as headers uh, and these are just basically sockets where you can connect things uh, you can connect wires or, or you can directly connect um, devices to those headers and then your, your Atmel uh, 80 mega 328p chip will speak to those devices via the headers. Um, the device is powered in one or two ways. You can connect a USB cable to it and power it with the USB cable or you can connect a uh, power supply uh, like 7 volts or 9 volts or 12 volts or something like that. I can't remember what the range is. It's something like from 7 to 18 volts or something like that. Um, but typically people will put in around sort of 7 volts or something like that. Um, Next to the power socket there's the voltage regulator. This just takes the voltage that you input, although you can input between 7 and 18 volts or whatever, whatever the range is. The chip itself needs 5 volts. So the voltage regulator will take whatever voltage you put in within that um, specified range and convert that voltage down to 5 volts, which is what the Arduino chip needs to work. You've then got a reset button. Uh, that uh, if your device crashes or anything like that then you can press the reset button and it will it will reset and it will come out of the crash loop. There's a power on LED so this will light when you power it up so that you know that it's on. Uh, there is an LED that's connected to pin 13 which you can use for testing purposes. You can make this LED flash and that will uh, that will prove that your board is working without actually having to physically connect anything to it. And then you've got transmit and a receive LED as well. So whenever you send data to the device or whether you, when you receive data from sensors, etc., down to the Arduino uh, via the serial port, there are other ways of, of talking to things, but if you do it over the serial port, then um, the transmit and receive TX and RX LEDs will flash to show you that that data is either going out or coming in. Uh, you have a crystal. Um, 16 megahertz crystal. The the chip on the Arduino will operate at 16 megahertz, which is incredibly slow compared to your desktop PC. But that's the speed it runs at. Uh, and then finally, there's another um, Atmel chip which takes care of the communication between your USB cable and your PC and the um, the Atmel chip itself. So that is what is on an Arduino. Board. Um, the pins, I uh, didn't explain those, but the pins you've got uh, a 3.3 volt output pin and a 5 volt output pin. So if you've got devices, mo most devices that you will connect an Arduino to will either be 3.3 volts or 5 volts. So uh, you can power them directly, uh, up, up to a certain limit anyway. You can power them uh, from these two pins. Then there is ground pins. Uh, there are analog input pins, there's six of those. There's 14 digital input and output pins um, and, and there's a couple of other pins on there but you don't need to worry about those, we will learn about those in later lessons. So that is what is on an Arduino board. What can you use an Arduino for? Well, that's up to you. That's up to your imagination. You can use an Arduino to do almost anything. Um, the best thing to do if you want to know what you can do with an Arduino is simply to go online and, and type in cool Arduino projects or something like that and you will see a plethora of fantastic things that people have made with Arduinos. You know there are lots of great websites out there which were which are almost dedicated to the Arduino, you know Hackaday, uh, Instructables, websites like that. Uh, I mean I've gone on Instructables website here, instructables.com, if you don't know what that is by now then go on and have a look uh, and I've typed in Arduino projects and it's come up with 20 unbelievable Arduino projects. So somebody's made an LED cube so 8 by 8 
uh, 3D cube of LEDs and, and um, I'm sure there's a video in there, I've seen loads of them where you know, it, it can play all kinds of fantastic animations with these LEDs. Uh, some guy here is controlling his greenhouse, so he's, he's probably controlling the temperature in there. He might have heaters in there or, or frost detectors or temperature sensors and all that kind of thing. And maybe, maybe I don't know, a flap will open to let in cool air and all that kind of thing. These are the kind of things you can automate with, with an Arduino. Uh, some guys made a, a mood box, uh, an LED lamp, a flame-throwing jack-o'-lantern. Uh, a 24 by 6 LED matrix, secret knock detecting door. So I've, I've seen that one before. You you knock on a door in a particular pattern, you know. So the way to open a door is you your pattern is something like, and the Arduino and its sensor will detect that specific knock, that pattern, and then it will open up an electronic lock on your door and let you in. Uh, this guy's designed a turn signal biking jacket, so on the back of his jacket he's got some LEDs which point left or right and as you're riding along he's probably got some buttons on his handlebar I presume and you press the left one and your left light will flash, press the right one, the right one will flash. A great thing that you can make for bicycle safety using an Arduino. Some guys made a tree climbing robot, a mobile dance stage with all kinds of fast, fantastic coloured lamps. Uh, we've got a fire-breathing animatronic pony, brilliant, uh, a twittering power meter, so this power meter will tweet um, how much power that this particular device is using. So this Arduino is connected to the internet and sending messages to Twitter, uh, a bubble machine, a radio-controlled lawnmower, uh, we've got a Arduino-powered chess-playing robot. You know, like I said, the sky is the limit. You can make anything you like. If you can think of it, then you can make it. Um, there's not much you cannot make with an Arduino. It's, it's probably a better question to ask what can't you make with an Arduino. Um, so, you know, an Arduino can be used to make almost anything. It's entirely up to you and your imagination. So you've just gone out and bought yourself a, a shiny new Arduino. Um, what you're going to need to do uh, when you first buy it is set it up, test it, get it running, make sure it works properly. Uh, and obviously we're going to need to do that before we move on to uh, lesson two and onwards. Uh, because if it doesn't work to start with and your laptop doesn't communicate with it properly, then we're not going to be able to do the project. So take your Arduino out of the box. Take your cable, you're going to need a USB A to B cable, it's the same kind of cable that you use to connect printers to. Plug your Arduino into the, uh, into the cable and you will then have a little green light come up, the, or on light, to show um, that it's working. When you um, buy a brand new Arduino and you power it up, you'll also find the little L LED is flashing. That's normal, that's, that shows that the code that's been uploaded to it uh, is working. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to do that process again just to make sure everything works and everything is communicating properly with the Arduino. So to get the software for the Arduino, you need to go to the arduino.cc website. Okay, so www.arduino.cc. Go to the download page. When you click on the download button, you'll then be given the, the, um, the latest version of the IDE. Obviously, it will depend on whether you have Windows as an operating system, or whether you've got uh, a Mac with OS X, or whether you're running Linux. So depending on your operating system, click on the relevant button, and your software will start to download. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to click the OS X button. The next page, you get an opportunity to contribute to the Arduino uh, software or the, software, the Arduino project, that, that should really be. Um, the Arduino project is an open source and non-profit making project, so they need your money. Um, they uh, spend a lot of time doing outreach projects where they go out and teach people electronics and teach people um, coding and so on, and, and kids and things like that. So. Um, you can help the project by contributing a bit, a bit of money. 
uh, anything from three dollars upwards. If you do, then click the contribute and download button. If you don't wish to contribute, then just click the just download button. Your software will then start to download. Once your software has downloaded, you'll need to unzip the zip file that, uh, that comes with it. Um, when you do that, you'll, depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac, uh, you'll get either an .exe or a .app, an app file. If you're on OS X, then you simply need to drag that app file over to your applications folder and release it into there. I've already done that, and there's my Arduino app. If it's Windows, then you'll get an .exe file, so you need to double-click that. You'll then run through the installer for the Arduino software. Um, and then afterwards you should have a, um, an icon somewhere that you, you can click to open up the software. Uh, if you're on Windows, you will also need to download the drivers. You don't need to download drivers if you're on OS X. To, get, to learn how to do that, uh, if you click on the download button on the Arduino website and come down to the Getting Started button, then come down to Windows, click on that, and then number four is install the drivers. And uh, the drivers do come in the zip file that you just downloaded, but you just need to run through this set of instructions on the screen to get the driver to work before you can um, before you can uh, get the Arduino to work and to talk properly. So once you've done all that and everything installed and you've installed the drivers if you're on Windows and so on and so forth then you can open up your app. When you open up the app you'll get version 1.6.5 as of today 19th of August 2015 uh, of the Arduino software and you'll be presented with this. So you get a window where your code will go. This is where you will write your code that will be uploaded to the Arduino. You get a basic blank sketch ready to, to go. Um, the code that you write for Arduino, they're known as sketches. Um, and also on the top of the IDE you have several buttons. Uh, you get a verify button, an upload button, a new button, open, save and then serial monitor. You don't need to worry about what these are for now, you'll learn about those later on. Um, so your software is installed, you've opened up your software, your Arduino is on, the power light is on. So in theory, your piece of software should be able to communicate with the Arduino. So the first thing you need to do is set up the software for the particular type of board that you're using. So you need to come up to the tools menu and then you need to choose the correct board and the correct port. So in the board menu, you need to come on down to Arduino Uno if you've bought an Arduino. Obviously there are other different types of Arduinos and it depends on which one you've bought. But if you've bought an Arduino, which is the one I recommend to buy for beginners, then click on that. And then you need to go back in again, Tools, Port, and you need to come down your list of serial devices and choose Arduino Uno. If you don't see Arduino Uno in that list, then you've not installed the drivers properly, or you might have a faulty board, or you've not plugged it in, or you may need to restart your machine, or whatever. But you need to make sure that you've got uh, Arduino Uno selected in boards, and you have Arduino Uno selected in the ports. When you've done that, in theory, your IDE should now be able to talk with your Arduino. So to test that, if we go up to File and come down to Examples, then across to Basics, then across to Blink and click on Blink. The Blink sketch will now be uploaded into the IDE, so let's get rid of that. This is the piece of code that will make the LED on your board flash. Uh, flash on and off once every second. You do not need to worry about how this code works for now. We will learn that as we go into lesson two and onwards. Uh, and eventually, when you come and read code like this, you'll understand how it works straight away just by looking at it. Uh, but for now, we just need to test this code. So, uh, once you've loaded your Blink sketch and you've connected your board and you've chosen the right, chosen the right board and port, then we can upload this sketch to the Arduino. So come across to the second button, which is Upload. Click on that. It should be a very quick process. It will compile the sketch. So it will turn your 
code into the, the language that the Arduino understands and then it will upload the sketch to the board. Now we know it's working because it says done uploading, uh, there's no error messages and the little L LED on the board is now flashing. Now just to make sure that was you that's done that, we can do something cool. If we come down to here where it says delay 1000, that's a thousand milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds is a second. If we just delete one of those zeros from there and come down and delete another zero from the bottom one so that they both read 100 instead of a thousand, uh, it will now flash on and off every 100 milliseconds, so that's a tenth of a second. So again, upload the code, wait a second for it to upload the code, and now, I don't know whether you can see that, but now the little L LED is flashing on and off once every tenth of a second. So if that's working, that means you have successfully installed your software, your drivers, you successfully uh, got your, your software to talk with your Arduino. Uh, so we're now all ready to go. Uh, we can now move on to lesson two, where we will actually connect something to the Arduino and you will start to learn slowly about electronics concepts about coding concepts and throughout the rest of the video series we'll do more and more advanced things until eventually you will become a competent Arduino developer. So that's the end of lesson one, uh, an introduction to the Arduino. So hopefully you now understand what an Arduino is, uh, you understand what you can do with an Arduino and roughly how it works. Uh, we've tested our Arduino, we've installed the software, so everything's ready to go for lesson two and onwards. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in lesson two.